Hey everyone, so this is just Mr. Tukin, and uh, if you're watching this, you might be in my liberal arts math class, uh, 6.03. A lot of math courses, though, kind of overlap, so uh, we always save our videos and stuff. So if you're getting this from another class, it's because the focus of this is going to be on understanding vertex form, which, if you're in liberal arts math, really helps on the 6.03 assignment. Um, literally every question on there involves vertex form of the quadratic function. So, the big focus that we're going to do in this video is just kind of talk about um, how we can read vertex form so that we know certain parts of it, so that we know certain parts of the graph. As a review, when we um, graph a quadratic function, and also I'm using over here Desmos.com, which is a great graphing calculator, really like it. Um, but when we graph like an equation like 3x, um, it, that would be like saying f of x equals 3x. We have function notation, which remember, that's just a way of naming the function. Um, you know, y equals 3x is the same thing. So we've got an input and an output. And when we graph a linear equation, it has a degree of 1. Uh, meaning the biggest exponent, which we can't see, but that's like saying x to the first power. It's the same thing. Notice how the graph didn't change. But if I turn around and make it a square, now I've got a degree of 2, which makes it a quadratic function. And that's what we're looking at. Um, so there's some effects uh, to quadratics that we can see very easily um, in a in a uh, quad well in any type of quadratic function. So let me come back to this one, which isn't in vertex form really. Oops. Um, but we want to talk about some key parts of a quadratic function. One of the huge parts is the vertex. Um, now, the vertex is always going to be a point. It's going to be an x and a y. It's a location on the graph where the, um, the function itself um, it starts kind of deal. And so you can think of it as a start. It's either going to be the minimum point. So if you think about it, when we say a minimum, it's like the lowest point. Or it's going to be a maximum, the highest point. And when we look at this, this is a minimum because the parabola opens up. And the vertex, is, in this case, is located at the origin or 0, 0. It's a location. Now, the cool thing about vertex form is that when we write, by the way, this is not vertex form. But when we see a quadratic in vertex form, and let's go ahead and let's, let's put an example together. Let's, uh, let's say, oh, I'll use g of x just to kind of mix up the um, quadratic function. I'm going to go ahead and put 5. And then parentheses, x minus 1. I'm going to close the parentheses, and I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to put uh, plus, let's do 3. Oops, well, that's equal. So let's try that again, plus 3. So that's going to be the quadratic I'm going to look at. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to enter that in. And again, with Desmos, what's really nice is you don't have to write the f of x stuff. You can just go right into the function part, um, kind of close it up here. And let's put a little plus 3. So right away, Desmos graphs our quadratic function for us, which is really helpful. And remember, the vertex is this the point that not only is the minimum or maximum, but we can also think of it as the, um, the shift. Like if you notice, we're decreasing here. As x is getting bigger, the y's are getting smaller until it hits the vertex, and then it shifts, and it goes back the other way. And notice where that points at. In this case, the vertex. I'm going to come back over here. The vertex of this one is located at... 1, comma, what, 3. 1, comma, 3. Well, think about that. When we hear the word vertex form, um, the reason they call it that, or it's often called that. By the way, you might hear it referred to as like general form. Some textbooks call it something different. But this general format right here, that's vertex form. So we've got that. And here's an example of a vertex form. And what's cool is we can determine certain things. For example, in vertex form, look at inside the parentheses and then outside to the rest. The h and the k, that's your vertex. Okay, that's going to be the location of your vertex. Notice how we had this, well, it looks like negative 1 inside there. And we'll talk about that in a second. And we've got the 3 right here. So the h and the k, as we can see over here, actually do... We can kind of pull out that number, and that tells us exactly where the vertex is. One of the most confusing things early on for students is uh, when we see this negative 1 in here. It's like, well, I don't understand. Why is this one positive when it shows negative, yet this one's positive and it stayed positive? What's going on there? Well, look at the format of it. All right, Notice how it has x minus h. Let's pretend for a second 
Um, we've got positive one. I'm going to write that as like a plus one here. Let me go to my pen real quick. Um, there we go. So we've got what is a plus one and a plus three, a positive one and a positive three. And the format is X minus H. Well, anytime I plug in for something, this is representing our H, the X coordinate of our vertex, which again, we can see over here. Well, if I plug that in, I'm gonna put a minus and then I'm gonna put um, plus one, okay, inside the parentheses. Well, a negative times a positive would still make a negative. The actual function says X minus the H. So you have to write that minus in and then you plug in whatever the vertex was. Well, together, if we multiply or distribute this negative into this little parenthesis, it will simplify to X minus one. And that's why even though it's positive inside the parentheses, it's gonna show up as or appear to be negative. On the outside, we had plus, and then it's K, right? So out here, this should be squared. I know there's an A out here, and we'll talk about A too. But um, we had plus K. Well, when we write that in there, it's plus positive three. Well, in this case, positive times a positive still makes a positive. So in the end, that's why the function simplifies to look like the H value is the opposite of what you see or what you actually have, yet the K value or the Y coordinate of our vertex, this Y coordinate is the same as what you see. So what's cool is right away with all this stuff, if we can understand that we can pull out the vertex anytime we have a function in vertex form, and let me go ahead and um, write H of X equals, oh, let's do negative two. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. Let me do X minus three squared. Uh, and then I'm gonna put minus, uh, let's see, 10. Well, from this, we don't have to graph it. We will in a second, but we don't have to graph this one to be able to get the vertex. So take a minute. You might write it down as just a, a mental note that, hey, the H is the opposite of what you see. The K is the same as what you see. So what is the vertex here? Well, again, we go into this and we look and see, okay, well, there's the th negative three, but remember that's the one that's the opposite. So it's gonna be positive three, but the K value, of our vertex, that's the same. So our vertex here is gonna be three, negative 10. And if we're correct, we can come in here and again, we can plug it in. And what's neat is like, it'll start to graph it as we go. So um, don't be alarmed if it suddenly gives you different things. Um, and then minus 10. Well, I can't see it, where is it? Well, in Desmos sometimes, you know, if it's graphed lower, you gotta go down there. But again, remember we said the vertex was at positive three, negative 10. And if we scroll on in here, you guys do a little zoom in. Sure enough, the vertex is at three, negative 10. So the cool thing about vertex norm is that we can see things, we know stuff about the graph without having to do anything. Now remember, another thing that you might get asked to do, or another important thing, is the axis of symmetry. So I'm gonna come back over here. And remember the connection between the axis of symmetry. Well, first off, just as a review, what is the axis of symmetry? Well, symmetry is like symmetrical, uniform, okay? Um, the left side matches the right side. It's kind of like a mirror image. And that's what's happening here. We've got that going on with this one. The axis of symmetry always is, an, well, in this case for ours, it will be a, a vertical line that splits the parabola in half. And that axis of symmetry is always, okay, uh, basically gonna run through the vertex. It's always gonna hit the vertex. And since it's, it's an X equal equation, it's a vertical line, the axis of symmetry is always the X coordinate of your vertex. So in this case, the axis of symmetry for this one would have to be X equals three. So if you can get the vertex from vertex form, you can immediately get the axis of symmetry as well. All right, so you get two things done at once, which is great. Another thing that is huge is notice what happened here with this parabola. You know, this, this parabola opened down 
And do you remember the last one? Let's let's do this. Um, I'm going to do everything the same, except I'm going to put positive two. And think about what effect the a value might have here. Remember, I'm everything else is well. I guess I shouldn't put plus, but everything else is going to be the same. And look what happened. This is the exact same parabola. It still has the same vertex, but this one opens upward. So the cool thing about the value A, and for the purposes of 6.03 in liberal arts math, the value of A basically tells you one big thing. If it's positive, opens up. Negative, opens down. So with this, we can immediately, if you, if I was given like a multiple choice test, hint, hint, if you're taking the assignment, you're going to end up with multiple choice. You should be able to be given a function and then look at the, the choices of the graph and know which one it is based on these things. You should be able to know where is the vertex. Remember, H is the opposite, K is the same. You should be able to determine after you get the vertex, well, which way is it going to open? Is it going to open upward or is it going to open downward? And if we can do that, that's pretty much, we'll probably know exactly which graph it is without actually having to graph it. Another thing they will ask you about in this is domain and range. And if you can do this, these three things, you're good with 6.03. For the purposes of the assignment, this is what it's going to get you kind of tested on. Domain, as a reminder, is um, the possible values for x. And here's the thing. Now, there are parabolas, there are quadratic functions, which, by the way, these are you know, parabolas, that this is not the case. But for our class, if your parabola opens upward or opens downward, it is always going to be all real numbers. That's because if we think about it, and let's, let me get rid of this one for a second. Let's just do this one. If we scroll out, notice that this x, remember, as we go left, as we go right, we're talking about the x values. Well, this x is not stopping. It's not going straight down. It's continuing to go left, and it's continuing to go right. And if we kept going forever and ever and ever, the x values just keep expanding left and right. Now, if you notice, the y values are going on forever down here in the negatives. So again, just to go back to domain, it's the possible x values, which in this case would be all real numbers. But there's a reason that y, or the range, which range is the same idea, but it's what are, what's possible, the possible values for y. Well, range is the same concept as domain, except now we're talking about the vertical axis. And it's clear that this vertical down here in the negatives is going to go on forever. But does it go up forever? Because if it did, if it went all the way up and all the way down, like a linear equation, when I say a linear equation, what I mean is like this, like if I do uh, y equals 5x, well, this is shooting down to the left forever, this is shooting up to the right forever, it's all real numbers. Well, is this one going up forever? No, there is a limit to it. And what is that limit? Well, it can get to negative 10, right? And the y coordinate, but it can't be negative nine. It can't be anything above that. So your range will often be some type of inequality. In this case, it has to be less than, I don't know if I've got that control U. It can be negative 10. So we've got to include that. So it's going to be an inequality. Oops, I guess I should turn that off. Uh, so underline. So it can be any number that is negative 10 or less than it. So therefore, the range is the values that the y can be. And in this case, it's negative 10 over and over. All right, so here's a quick recap. Again, we're looking at vertex form right here. When we look at vertex form, we're looking at the value of a to tell us which way does it open. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. We're going to pull out the h and the k, which is our vertex. The h, all right, just to make a sure. Remember, that's going to be the opposite value. So if it comes out negative, right, if it comes out negative, or we see negative, it's going to turn out positive. 
If it's positive, it actually comes out negative. And that's the last one we'll do is we'll just show an example of that. I'll get rid of this one. Um, and uh, K value, that's going to come out the same. All right, what you see is what you get. If it's positive, it's positive. If it's negative, it's negative. H is the opposite. K is the same. So let's do one more. Let's see, I've had F of X, H of X, G of X. Uh, let's do T of X. What the heck? We'll name the function T. Um, let's do positive three, parenthesis. Oh, let's do this one. Try to throw you a curveball here a little bit. Um, I'm just going to put a parenthesis. I'm going to do X plus two um, squared. And I'm going to put minus five. Some of you, when we try to determine this, we look and say, what's A? You know, what is the value of A? You're going to run into functions where they don't show you that value, but you have to remember what number must be out here. Since we don't see it, it's positive one. And then can we pull out the vertex? Remember, the H is the opposite. So when we make the vertex, right, when we make the vertex, we pull out the opposite number. So I see a positive two, which means our X coordinate of the vertex must be negative two. And I see a negative five, that's the same one. So what I know about this function without graphing it, and we're gonna graph it in a second, is that it must open upward, which means our vertex is gonna be the minimum point. It's gonna be the lowest possible point, And the vertex must be at negative two, negative five. It's gonna look something like this when I graph it. Let's talk about domain and range. What did we say for these quadratics? If it opens up and it opens down, your domain is always all real numbers. Remember the last one opened down and therefore it was a less than because the Y values couldn't go above that certain point. Well, if the parabola opens upward, our range or the possible Y values is gonna turn around and be greater than or equal to. It's gotta be greater than or equal to this lowest point. This one's opening up. This one, this parabola is opening up. So the vertex is our lowest point, which means all the other Y values, all the other Y values, we're going on for infinite. We go up into the infinity in the positives. But we are allowed to go down to negative five. We're allowed to get there. So our range is greater than or equal to negative five. And just to confirm, we'll go back to Desmos one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and just start with the parentheses. And what's great is Desmos knows, hey, if I was graphing x plus 2, that would be a linear equation. We'd be looking at that. But the minute we turn around and go squared, we go there. But notice also, if I have this function, that's like saying k is 0. So notice where they put the vertex. Because I could write plus 0, it's not going to change anything. But we know in this type of function, it was plus, it wasn't plus 0, it was plus, or minus, excuse me, minus 5. And lo and behold, there's our vertex opening upward because of a positive one and again um, goes up for infinity goes up for infinity but it does hit this point so therefore it's greater than or equal to negative five for the range all right hope that helps thanks